Hello, thank you for choosing my channel to watch today. We will be reading the actual words from an 1800s newspaper in a few moments. When you think of the 1800s, you think of people who are prim and proper, but they could be silly too. They also had some silly inventions, like this one. I'm not sure what an automated goat is for. Could it be a ride for kids? Or do you use it to lead the flock to where you want them to go? Here's a one-wheeled vehicle patented in 1885. I find it amusing that he's smoking a cigarette. How about a rocking or oscillating bathtub? Also in the 1800s, people had a fear of being buried alive. Here's a device for indicating life in buried persons. Ooh, and I find this creeping doll rather creepy. Oh, I was so excited to actually find a picture of the creeping doll today. Look out, gophers. This animal trap is sure to annihilate you. I like this one. Gentlemen, if you're tired of tipping your hat all the time to the ladies, well, this invention will tip the hat for you. And my last silly invention is this flying machine. It has a balloon and wings. Hmm, maybe it actually works. Talking about silly inventions, if you stay tuned to the end of this video, you'll see a cartoon short with Betty Boop having an invention show. Let's read the Portsmouth Journal dated August 21st, 1869. Cut this out and keep it. Franklin Dyer a highly respectable and intelligent farmer of Galena, Kent County, Maryland, gives the following as a sure cure for the bite of a mad dog. El Campane is a plant known to most persons and is found in many of our gardens. Immediately after being bitten, take one and a half ounce of the root of the plant and put it into a pint of fresh milk. Boil down to a half pint and strain, and when cold, drink it. The next morning, repeat the dose. I have a son who was bitten by a mad dog 18 years ago, and four other children in the neighborhood were also bitten. They took the above dose and are alive and well to this day. It is supposed that the root contains a principle which, being taken up by the blood in circulation, counteracts or neutralizes the deadly effects of the virus of hydrophobia. Francis Joseph, Emperor of Austria, is quite a mechanical genius. He has recently found time to construct a clock, a very ingenious piece of workmanship, which he has presented to his mother, the Archduchess Sophia. There is attached to this clock a gaudily plumed cock which crows every day at sunrise. A profitable day's plowing. One day last week, as Mr. Van of the Cherokee Nation was plowing in his field at Webster Falls, 
his plow struck something. Stopping his mule, supposing it was to be a root, he struck the mule with his lash, and it gave a sudden pull, when up came five old Spanish dollars. Mr. Van went to the spot where the coin appeared, and on examining, found a keg full of the coin. The staves of the keg were rotten, but the dollars were sound. On digging up the keg, he found it contained $5,000, all in old Spanish dollars of the date of about 1806. Since the finding of this money, the whole field has been dug up in search of hidden treasure. Pay up. All persons or firms having bills against us are requested to present the same for settlement, and all indebted to us are respectfully requested to make payment. Goodwin, Switzer & Company. Whale Oil Soap, the best article for the destruction of bugs on plants and vines. Try it, only 25 cents a box. For sale by S. Cleves & Son, number three, Elm Street. The finest stock of bird cages in Boston is at Charles G. Brewster's, 16 Tremont Street. New and elegant patterns of the Osborne Patent Cage are being received every week. A French paper gives the following, which is not very new, but is always good. An old man of 60 in the prisoner's dock was sentenced to 20 years hard labor. Oh, thank you, dear judge, thank you. I didn't hope to live so long. Here at the 1800s newspapers, I get comments from people who would like me to do one of the articles that I missed. Here is a couple that was requested by a subscriber. The Lawrence American gives an animated account of the wheeling of a black man from Methan to Lawrence on Saturday by D. H. Patterson of Methulin in fulfillment of an election wager. A large crowd of people assembled to see the party off. The black man, a young man from Concord, New Hampshire, about 130 pounds, was duly mounted upon a wheelbarrow and preceded by the Methan Cornet Band and a company of tanners. The line of march was taken up for Lawrence. Handkerchiefs waved, the people cheered, cannon roared, and all the steam whistles in town screamed their loudest. On the side of the wheelbarrow was a large sign saying, Man Suffrage! Freedom for Men! The road to Lawrence was lined with carriages of all sorts and crowds of people. A French milliner has invented a new kind of headdress, a garland of flowers so contrived that as the heat of the dancing room increases, the petals gradually open and finally fall in the hair, disclosing a diamond or ruby heart in each. Thus, the crushed flowers after a dance will be replaced before the close of the ball by a second headdress.
attention, please. Ladies and gentlemen, to the left, we have the largest in this row. And to the right, we have the largest in the desk. To the left, we have the holding desk. To the right, to the left, right, left, right, left, right. Now, will someone let me have a handkerchief? Here you are. Oh, <laughs> 